I, Haviko, from the Pro Wrestling Academy in Campbell River. Keep watching Shaw TV North Island for myself and all the future stars of PWA Wrestling as we come to your television. I'm BJ Laredo, and you're watching PWA Wrestling on Shaw TV. You know, I've been around quite a while. I'm a two-time BC champion. I think tonight I'm going to hold an open challenge. I'm going to challenge Haviko. He shows more heart than anybody in that locker room. He's small, but he has a big bite. Haviko, me and you, one-on-one. -on -one. This is former PWA BC champion Nolan James inviting you to the Pro Wrestling Academy in Campbell River. If you want to learn the skills that we all know as pro wrestlers, come on down, check it out. You won't be disappointed. Ladies and gentlemen, in the corner to my right, weighing in at 236 pounds, and hailing from Salt Spring Island, Crofton! <laughs> and in the corner to my left, weighing in tonight at 155 pounds, from Campbell River, British Columbia, Helico! Interesting matchup. You got Crofton, who's got quite the size advantage on Haviko, but also the experience advantage. Gentlemen's handshake to get things started. Here we go. Lock up. Crofton just shoves him away. Here we go, Haviko. <laughs> A little bit of. Uh, Tit for tat there, so. Well, not only different height, Ojos, but definitely a difference in experience. Crofton debuting in 2013, and Haviko not debuting until April 28th, 2016, so three years between these two individuals. Um, a huge difference. It's going to make a huge difference out there. Absolutely. So Haviko got, gone behind him, and now Crofton reverses it. Headlock takeover. Almost drove his head into the mat on the way there. Uh, that looked devastating. Not Ojos. treating him very good right out of the gates. Uh, Crofton uh, showing people. that uh, in-ring experience with that head control. Working him in there. Avico uh, brings it out. Oh, nice reversal. Spins him around. Avico uh, definitely utilizing and some of that training. Absolutely. Straight from the PWA Academy. Oh, absolutely rough hard chop. Job. Pick him up. Oh, and oh. reversed. And the reversal by Haviko. I thought that was going to be a devastating maneuver by Crofton. Oh, my God. Completely. Couldn't quite see there. He's got him. Front face reversed again. Haviko. Front face lock. Working that arm again. some way. Now Crofton takes over. Oh, he's in the leg, holding him in there. A little teasing there. Showboating, if you will. That looks absolutely painful, though. Joseph like can work the arm of Haviko, and Haviko's taking some control here. I'm a, I'm a little surprised right out of the gates that Crofton's kind of playing this game with him. He really has a size advantage. I thought he'd be using, using it to his advantage. There it is. Brings him back down to the ground. And once again, uh, Crofton has got that side control there. You know what's interesting about this matchup though, you know, Crofton is definitely gonna use his size advantage to try to keep Haviko grounded. But if he is unable to, you watch, Haviko's gonna take off like a shot. He's gonna be looking for those top rope spots. This guy is incredibly fast. Absolutely. Get that. Around ducks a clothesline, comes back in, head scissors takedown. Absolutely incredible move by Helvico taking down Crofton there. I don't think he knows where he is. Monkey flip out of the corner. He may be underestimating Helvico at this stage. Absolutely, and that can definitely be a dangerous tool in the ring against you as well. Oh, 
puts him on the top. Oh, what a he shot. Sends the power there of Croft and holding Helvigo back and sitting him on the top rope. Well, the ref trying to give him. Helvigo high cross. That's where the size comes into play. Absolutely, Helvigo was looking for a big move, but it's gonna, it's gonna backfire on him. Right in the turnbuckle. Oh. Absolutely devastating kick to the face. So you can tell Crofton's got the experience right out of the gate. Hooked the leg. No problem. And well, that they experience didn't get the is what has made Crofton a former two-time PWA British Columbia champion. Absolutely. Make no bones about it. Crofton, he's a gamer. Nico getting out of the way just in time, and it's a good thing he did because that looked like it had the power of a running freight train. Working up in the corner. Crofton like stops it though. Court. What's he doing here? Oh! Absolutely devastating kick to the face, and now he's got him up high on his shoulders. Up. What is he looking for? Oh. He's going for the oh, pinup How Jeez. did Havico manage to get his shoulders up on that one? That looked like it was a knockout of a move. At six foot five, Crofton <laughs> looks like a tower bringing that guy down. Absolutely. Snapmare. Solid drop kick right to the face. Two count. Well, I really hope that Javico's got an appointment with his plastic surgeon in the morning, let me tell you, Ochoz. Maybe that's why he's wearing the mask. Possibly. I can't imagine that it's helping too much against those big boots from Crofton, though. That is a big man, and that is a big boot. Well, right now, you can see right there, bringing him back down. He's got all his weight there. He's got Abiko probably having a hard time breathing. Really sinking in. And you have to assume that the, the weight is definitely playing in your factor there when he's got that side control and that headlock. That's, that's a lot of pressure down on Abiko. Absolutely. It's definitely a David versus Goliath kind of match. Oh. Hard elbow right to the face. And now Crofton has got the advantage again. Him in the corner. Oh, has got a hurt. That's a hot shot right to the chest. No doubt about it. Well, there's some big hands on a much smaller chest cavity, let me tell you. Irish whipping in the corner with a reverse. Brings him out. Oh! Absolutely devastating. Brings him back down. Havico picking an arm, going to work on it. It's an absolutely smart move by Havico. Oh! Hey, Avico's really showing me something here. Working that arm, he's putting Crofton in a world of hurt right now. He's got incredible pressure on that arm bar, Ochos. I don't quite think Crofton came out here expecting to get in the ring with this. I thought it was, you know, he, he might have had the mindset it was going to be a bit of a cakewalk. He had the experience, the size advantage, but Havico's out there really pushing the limits early on. Absolutely. You kind of thought maybe it'd be an open and shut uh, case there, but... Uh, Oh, Avico up on the top, on the top rope. rope. That's where he likes to be. Going to work on that arm. See, now he's bringing Crofton down to size. Drop kick, bring him down. Another one. Now he's going for the cover here. One. Oh, only a two count. How did Crofton manage to get his shoulder up? And I do believe that's the shoulder that Havico uh, has been working so, so hard on. I do not know how he managed to get that up. He must well, be in so much pain right now, Ochoz. He may not have wanted to let Crofton get up like that. Now Crofton, oh. Absolutely devastating clothesline by Crofton, another cover. Two count, Crofton really puts the combinations together. Inverted atomic drop, followed up by a huge clothesline. He just knows how to piece it all together. That's experience for you, let me tell you. Crucifix oh on his goodness. back. What do we Brings have here? Avico looking for the pin and only a two count somehow Crofton managed to getting out of that. Back up, oh, victory roll. See Crofton was gearing for another move there. Avico just rolled right through him. Avico and going in behind and another pin. And somehow Crofton managed to get right. the shoulder up there, managing to kick out of that. 
pinning predicament, and I don't know how. This man is so fast. And you can see that, that quick explosion by Javico. Absolutely. And he's going to go for the cover. Only a two count. Somehow Crofton managing to get that shoulder up again. This man has got so much heart. Well, you see with Javico, he's, he's getting him to the ground, getting, getting to pin him, but he's not hooking the legs, not taking a, you know. But over he goes. Oh, oh my goodness. Twists and turns and turns and twists. And now he's going to go for the cover. How did he not get the pin there? He had so much. He had the leg hooked. He had the leverage. It was an absolutely devastating maneuver. But somehow Crofton managing to kick out. Ducks a clothesline. Oh, a cutter. Just. <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even see those coming. He just hits the cutter. Just now when you thought that Javico had it out of nowhere, Crofton with a cutter, and now he's going to the top rope looking for something huge and devastating. Oh! Oh, and he takes it! Oh, absolutely incredible, folks. Crofton hitting the huge elbow drop off the top rope and getting the one, two, three. And now it's the winners from here. As a result of pinball, You are watching PWA Wrestling on Channel 4 Shock Cable. My name is EO Mike Besher. I am Campbell River through and through. I've moved to Ontario. I wrestled there for about 15 years. My dream was always to come back to this island like I have and start a pro wrestling academy. You can be like Javico, Judas Icarus, Nolan James, Nathan Legacy, Zach Merrick, and many more. They're climbing the ranks in the Pure Wrestling Association. They're kicking butt in Vancouver Island Pro Wrestling, and that's just the very beginning for these guys. Ladies and gentlemen, in the corner to my left, weighing in tonight at 155 pounds, hailing from Nanaimo, British Columbia, Sloan! <laughs> and in the corner to my right, hailing from the ghettos of Prince George, Rhea Von Slasher! Should be an interesting matchup. Right out of the gates. Rhea Von Slasher goes straight into the post. Couldn't quite finish the match. Right out of the gates. Two count. Sloan with a big elbow. She's working the crowd. Goes again. She seemed to telegraph that one just a little bit. Hello, Jose. I'm back alongside you here. Vaughn Slasher takes her in the corner. It'll be interesting to note in this matchup too, who chose the, uh, the experience difference again between these two competitors. Uh, Rhea Vaughn Slasher wrestling for many, many years, a lot longer than uh, 
the newbie Sloan. Sloan bringing her in the corner. Could be looking for a bulldog. Well played. You know what, while you uh, refer to Sloan as a newbie, you must realize she's been trained by Lance Storm, so she brings a lot to the table. Additionally, she has experience uh, with ECCW and ASW as well. So she's definitely talented. But you're correct when you say Von Slasher definitely has an experience advantage. She's wrestled all over the place and has a mean streak, trust me. Well, she definitely has a mean streak, and she definitely has a size advantage out there. You look for her to be uh, dropping some absolutely devastating maneuvers. Well, she's she's got a vicious streak. There's no doubt about it. She comes uh, <laughs> she comes about it honestly. Oh, look at that. she's just toying with her right now at this stage, treating her like a rag doll. Like a shark who smelled blood in the water. She is just toying with her opponent here. Look at her work right now. Got Sloan left over the rope. That ref would be best to stay out of the way right now. She's a mean one for sure. She's definitely vicious in there, and the referee's going to have his hands full, trying to make sure that uh, Rhea is not utilizing those ropes to her advantage as we've seen her with a vicious choke just moments ago on Sloan. Well, Sloan was fighting back there for a second, but again, it's that strength and power advantage that that she brings to the table. Sloan fighting it off. She looks like she got a good shot in there that rocked Von Slasher. Absolutely. Uh, she had uh, Sloan up on her shoulders. Here's a pin there. Almost a, almost a three count, but somehow, Freya Von Slasher managed to get her shoulder up there. As I was saying, she had Sloan up on her shoulder, but it looks like Sloan got some of those hard elbows to the face. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Absolutely devastating clothesline, turning Sloan inside out. Now Rhea's got control. Oh, look at that power of Rhea on Slasher, delivering a standing vertical suplex. Now going for the cover. Only a two count. Sloan managed to get her shoulders up off the canvas, and I do not know how. That was absolutely incredible. Well, both of these women are definitely bringing something to the table tonight. Not, uh, not afraid to take some risks. She's got her in the corner, chopping away. Look at this. Ooh. Another devastating chop by Rhea Von Slasher to Sloan there. Those do not tickle, folks. Let me tell you, they are super, super painful. And Sloan going behind. I can't tell who's got control here. Rhea Von Slasher rolling out of it. An absolutely devastating, powerful maneuver by Rhea Von Slasher. And now the big kick to the face. Sloan is seeing stars. She's seeing celebrities. And now the cover. Not quite enough at this stage, but I don't really think Von Slasher seems to mind. She likes to uh, inflict pain, if you will. She seems very comfortable in there. She really enjoys toying with her opponents. She doesn't want to finish them quickly. That's for darn sure, Ochos. Look at this. Whips are over. She's got, she's got her knee just pressed right against the back, pulling her. That's a painful hold right there. So and she's going to just wear her down. And it's vicious moves like that that has made Rhea Von Slasher a multiple time VIPW Women's Champion. No doubt about it, a lot of competitions come over from various locations, come to the island to face her, and she's really defeated um, them all. And depending on who you ask, uh, you might say that this island uh, belongs to Rhea Von Slasher, definitely in terms of the female division in wrestling. Well, if it's any indication of what you're seeing right now, she's definitely looking like she's toying with her at this stage. But you know what? I wouldn't count Sloan out at all. No, absolutely not. She's uh, one she thing uh, we've seen at Sloan in the past, she definitely has incredible amount of heart. She can take a, a lot of punishment. And look, at there's a reversal right there. Now Sloan getting back in control. 
Her, took her time getting her over there. Brought her straight down to the mat. Still not quite enough, but she's definitely still in the match, still in the game. Uh, definitely an interesting modified neck breaker there. She went for the cover. I kind of thought that she might have had the one, two, three. I thought it might have been over. But uh, Rhea Von Slasher getting uh, the advantage. And a huge oh. leg drop by Rhea going leg for the drop. cover. See, at this stage, you got to wonder with Von Slasher, she seems to really be toying with her. She's enjoying inflicting this pain. Sloan keeps making, mounting a comeback because she's just not going to give up. If we could get a close up camera uh, look of uh, Rhea Von Slasher's face, she'd probably be laughing. She'd probably have a sadistic smile on her face. Oh! See, this is where, he, you know, we can't underestimate Sloan. Just like I said, you know what? Just because she doesn't have the experience, she's got the speed advantage, and that was quick. Well, you mentioned that she was trained by the great uh, storm. So, I mean, that's definitely going to go to her advantage there, too. Look at this. She's putting her coat on. Is she ready to go home? Oh. Uh, that was absolutely devastating. She put her coat on because she's ice cold. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Hard shots right to the head of Rhea Von Slasher oh. must be seeing stars. Yes, there are ring lights, Rhea, but that's not the light you're seeing. Absolutely. She's, oh. Now this action has gone to the outside. Sloan has the advantage again coming off of that ramp with a huge forearm to the face of Rhea Von Slasher rolling her into the ring. Uh-oh. Oh, absolutely she caught her. incredible move there. Oh, that was enough to get the victory. Ladies she used the ropes. What just happened there? Absolutely incredible. What happened there? Did she use came, the ropes? I, I, came out of nowhere. You really didn't expect so it, but. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this contest as a result of pinfall, Raya Von Slasher! PWA wrestling fans, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Haviko and Crofton was quite the match. I see big things in the future for Haviko, and Crofton inched his way closer to a BC championship match. Also, the elite women's action was quite the battle as Rhea Von Slasher got the victory, albeit in controversial fashion, but I don't think it's the last we've seen of these two. On next week's episode, we're going to be seeing a battle of the Island Crusaders as Crofton takes on Sayward's own Nolan James. Will Crofton be able to punch his ticket to a BC Championship match or will Nolan James prove to be too much for Crofton? Also next week, you're going to see Infinite Nathan Legacy take on Haviko. These two high flyers are sure to put on quite the match. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Ocho.